good morning y'all <clears throat> again <clears throat> number two what to do all right my voice always be messing with me on number two uh god bless y'all all right <laughs> one day at a time <clears throat> little by little keep that in mind not everything is gonna be done for you at one time all right <laughs> you should have it in your mind put it in there all right <laughs> you gotta take the good with the bad my brothers or sisters because you can't have one without the other, all right? You can't have ups without downs, fouls without free throws. Daytime without nighttime, you experience this every 24 hours, 12 hours a day, and 12 hours a night. Sometimes things going to be sunny and smooth, and sometimes they not, okay? <laughs> I know you want to walk in the sunshine. Who don't? You want to walk on the beach with your dad, or everything, on La La Land, stuff's just going right. You wake up, it's happening. <laughs> no problems. Everything just going according to plan. Not down here. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Listen, man. Uh, you can't escape what Jesus said unless you can correct God. Jesus said in this world, you're going to have trouble. <laughs> Ain't no avoiding that. You're going to have, you don't care how much money you got, how good your job is, how good your family is, you're going to have trouble. Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 33, you will have trouble in this world. But in him, in God's word, you got peace. I love the fact, man. No matter what you got going on, life, death, prison, suffering, sickness, whatever going on, you can have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through the living word of God. You hear me? Listen, man. <laughs> Why wow, I like that right there. I love that. Where wow. he'll give you a peace that transcends all understanding. It ain't gonna make sense to you. How come you so peaceful in this situation? <laughs> because, man, you're hanging on to God as you want you to be. Isaiah 26, verse 3, God said, You are keeping perfect peace. Those whose minds are steadfast, unchanged, because they trust him. <laughs> Listen. Daytime without nighttime. You can't. You, I love the fact stars only shine. With, stars only shine at night. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, a lot of y'all understand what I'm saying. Stars only shine at night. I love to go outside at night, look at the stars, man. That's the only time you can see them. <laughs> a lot of y'all gonna shine in the daytime when everything going right. Listen, you get your shine time in at night <laughs> when stuff not looking so bright. In fact, when all hell breaking loose, when through the roughest hours of your life, you can sh you can shine like a star, ever so bright. <laughs> if you Allow the process to do what God intends for it to do. Listen to me. God will allow dark times to come over you. Midnight hours, dark moments, just to get you to a point to draw closer to him. To draw closer to him. You see what I'm saying? That's how you shine. You go You go to God. Forget everything else, man. Forget going to the money, the world, and fame, whatever. Go to God. A lot of y'all, God will allow things to happen to you. You run away from God. You run to the world. You doing? I don't think you understand. <laughs> y'all call on everything you can to get out of the situation. You call your family. You call your friends. You call your little money. You call your girl. Listen, you call on everything except God. He don't want to allow you to go through what you're going through. He will take everything away from you. Your resources, your car, your house, every, all he'll take all that stuff away from you to get you to a point of complete dependency of him and him alone. You can have, listen, man, <laughs> you can have the world. Well, David, David was a king. God allowed him to be chased out of the kingdom. You hear me? Uh, what good is having a kingdom but not having a capital K I N G, the true king himself, God Almighty? Listen, you can have the whole world. What good is it? What good is it for you to have the world but not have the creator of the world? This is what I'm saying, man. God will take all these things away from you. You hear me? Just to get you to a point of complete dependency of him and him alone. That's something he wants you to learn and understand, man. Because listen, when you understand that, you can have it all but have nothing. But you can have very little bit and have it all. David got chased out of the kingdom. He had nothing. But what Psalm 23 verse 1 say? David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He lost it all. He didn't have nothing to rely on but God. And when you understand that and got that, man, I'm telling you. It don't matter what you physically got or don't got. Because when you got God as your shepherd, you got it all, my brother, sister. You can pretty much close the book on your life. David said, I walked through the valley. The place we live in is not a pleasant place. This is this is the valley of the shadow of death. David said, I walked through the valley. I fear no evil. He said, I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. Even though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you with me. Your rod and your staff. They come for me. You prepare talking about God. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. That's all the representation of the Holy Spirit. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness, God's goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Not no regular church, but the house of the Lord. Eternity 
forever. <laughs> I see David yelling at man. Listen to me. <laughs> David learned a valuable lesson, how to trust in God without nothing. That's what he wants you to learn. <laughs> when you're able to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean out on your own understanding, that's what he wants you to get to that point right there, my brother says. <laughs> he wants you to be able to trust in him when you're, when you're at your lowest moments. You hear me? A lot of y'all think you're going to go to God when stuff up. <laughs> God will bring you down to lift you up higher than ever. You see what I'm saying? That's the whole point of it. But y'all don't. Y'all never learn that lesson. You run away from what God trying to get you to get to. You see what I'm saying? He must before before God can use a man or a woman, he must break you. <laughs> Why is that, Devontae? Because he must he, he must bring you to a point of complete dependency of him and him alone. Devontae, how you ever been broken? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Listen to me, man. Before God can use you, he must break you and take you down and then lift you up higher than ever. Okay? A lot of y'all want to go up in the world and wonder why you can't you be, you be useless. Because <laughs> you, you never you got you must be broken before you can be fixed. Okay, the Lord must take all these things away from you and get you to understand he all you need. God said, I'm the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You hear me? He wants you to learn that. Many of y'all don't learn that. That's what he wants you to learn, though. Listen. And when you get there, my brother says, don't ever forget it. Don't ever forget that. All right? You just go through it. I know it's painful, but no pain, no gain. You must go through some if you want to gain some, okay? All right, you just keep on breathing, inhaling, and exhaling. You're going to be all right. Hmm, all right. Don't forget to do that. Hmm, okay? <laughs> all glory, honor, and praise go to my Father in heaven, Lord Jesus, and the sweet Holy Spirit. Got to give credit, honor, and glory to who is due. Amen. Whatever today is, Monday. Don't nobody talk to me. <laughs> Monday, uh, January 1, 533 a.m., 2024. It ain't 2023 no more. All right, 2024. Uh, it's early. <laughs> I love to be up while everyone else is asleep. <laughs> if you go to sleep early, man, you wake up early. Y'all ain't up all night chasing dumb stuff. Look, if you didn't get you one of these, you should have got you one to read. You still can. Inbox me. Y'all show some love and support. All right, inbox me. Uh, it's a nice pack called Knowledge from God Almighty, Volume 1. By some dude named Devontae Farm. <laughs> nice book, nice name, with some nice teachings in it. But listen. This book do not replace the Bible. I'm going to keep on saying that. This book do not replace the Bible, okay? You're never going to get step two until you take step one. Step one, taking God as word, okay? Word, as far as reading wise, you're never going to get step two until you take step one, okay? Everything you need, can, need, and will need is from the God's word and his word alone. If you can't read your Bible, if you can't read God's word, what he get, what he, the, very first, the very first thing he wants you to understand, you're not going to be able to read this or anything else God gave you. God can give you a hundred different books from a hundred different people, excellent teachers. But if you can't understand what God wants you to see in your Bible, you ain't going to be able to understand nothing else. You said you're just gonna have it sit on the shelf somewhere or you're going to take it and turn it and put your little twist on it or something. You see what I'm saying? Listen, man. <laughs> All right. So if there's any truth in the books, they're going to point you to the Bible. Okay, listen. All right. uh, I love to read the Holy Quran, which I'm about to do. That is a divine inspired word of God, revelations from God, given by God Almighty Himself to the Prophet Muhammad through the angel Gabriel. Yeah, where it points you to the Bible. Y'all see when I read the Holy Quran, I'm in the Bible, they go hand in hand. You can't read the Holy Quran without reading the Bible. That's like that's like you don't see many many people reading the Holy Quran. They can't because they can't read the Bible. <laughs> listen, man, I'm telling you, it go hand in hand. Listen, where? All right, so I would advise you to get a Bible. And don't just get the Bible, but read it. Don't just read the Bible. Do what it said. James said in James chapter, Brother James said in James chapter 1, verse 22, do not merely listen to the word and deceive yourselves. Do what it says, okay? Jesus said, why do you call me Lord? But not doing what I'm telling you. You're defeating everything God's showing you. You're not taking his words and putting them into practice. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, therefore, Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Mm -hmm. uh, the rain came, the streams rose, the wind blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. <laughs> Jesus Christ is the cornerstone, the rock upon which you must build your life on. <laughs> man, if you build your life on God, my brother, sister, if you build your life on Jesus Christ, the living word of God, you ain't got nothing to worry about. <laughs> you're going to get scraped up and banged up along the way, but you're going to be fine. You ain't going to fall. All right. The rest of y'all building your lives on sin. Hmm. Word. Money, cars, clothes, feet, mouths, whatever. If it ain't built on God, if it ain't built on his word, you're building, like, you're building your life on sin. You can have all the money in the world. Go, go to the hospital and get sick. 
and go get your money and see what your money gonna do for you. Yeah, let, 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 be on your deathbed and see what that money gonna do for you. <laughs> Call your girlfriend or your boyfriend when you sit on your on your deathbed and see what they gonna do for you. <laughs> I guarantee they can't do a thing for you. You see what I'm saying? But God, though, God got power over death, huh? He got power to heal. My, my little sister died hmm? a long time ago. She died. What, my, what, she died, man. She got her head caught in the window. What my mom do? My mom called on my great grandma. What my great grandma do? My great grandma called on Jesus, pleaded the blood seven times. The life came back in her. She never that life came back to her. Huh? I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. A lot of y'all build your lives on stuff that's going to leave y'all. You see what I'm saying? Where? God said, I'd never leave you, never forsake you. Listen to me. Where I'm going to. Let me see. I always start off like this. <laughs> yeah, I always start off like this. Uh, go to Mark chapter 9. Something I think pretty fast, and I'm, I'm going to say this again. <laughs> if any one of y'all Jehovah Witness, <laughs> there would be no Jehovah Witness if it was not for an Arabic man called Master Fried Muhammad. You hear me? I think that's so good. Jehovah Witness is the next closest thing to a Muslim. You hear me? What do you mean, Devante? There will be no Jehovah Witness if there was not for a man named Master Fraud Muhammad. You hear me? He come from Saudi Arabia. He the one who taught Elijah Muhammad. The, honor, the, word, the honorable Elijah Muhammad live in paradise, brother. Listen. <laughs> Pastor Fraud Muhammad came over. He, he didn't make himself known to a lot of people. <laughs> but Pastor Far, Far Muhammad taught a man named Pastor Russell <laughs> and a man named Judge Rutherford. And out of there, and out of the teaching that he taught them came the Jehovah Witness. <laughs> uh, that's super cool, man. Listen. <laughs> the Jehovah Witness is the next closest thing to a Muslim. They witnesses of Jehovah. You ever hear my Muslim brother say, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. That's the same thing the Jehovah Witness doing. They worship, they, they are bearing witness that there is no God but Jehovah. Our Father. I love that right there, man. They got it down, they got it right. But a lot of the Jehovah Witness people, they don't understand. They, they, as, as teaching, it's like Christian people who don't really understand Jesus. But they got it right. You know what I'm saying? But people, it ain't, ain't, ain't nothing wrong with God's word. It's the people who who got off track. You know what I'm saying? At first, it was on track. People get off track. You know what I'm saying? But they got it right. They witnesses of Jehovah. As God, as, as Exodus say, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other God but me, before me. You see what I'm saying? They got it right. <laughs> well, some of the people just got it wrong, but they, they, they had it right. You hear me? But there would not be Jehovah Witness if there was not for a man named Master Fraud Muhammad. <laughs> you hear me? He taught, he taught, he taught, he taught uh, Pastor Russell and, uh, and Judge Russell. <laughs> you hear me? I'm telling you. Well, that's, that's pretty cool. It was an Arabic man who came over here <laughs> and taught these people. Well, and taught them how to be Jehovah Witnesses. That's pretty cool, man. Anyway, let me, let me go to this. Mark chapter 9. Verse 38. Mark chapter 9, verse 38. Uh, I love this. I always start off like this every every time I read the Holy Quran. This is how man think. <laughs> Mark chapter 9, verse 38. John said, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop <laughs> because he was not one of us. That's how man think. <laughs> because you're not Jew, because you're not a Christian, because you're not a Muslim, because you're not Jehovah Witness, because you're not Baptist, because you're not eat the van because you're not evangelist, because you're not Presbyterian, because you're not Pentecostal, because you're not Protestant, because you're not Lutheran, because you're not Mormon, because you're not a Methodist, because you're not Ethan Orthodox, you can't be for God. That's how man think. Because you don't walk how they walk, talk how they talk, or do things the way they do things, you ain't for God. That's how man think. People be so divided, man. I love the fact, I love what Jesus said, though. Jesus is the greatest teacher, the greatest teacher who ever walked this earth. Listen, I love, I love Jesus, man, and his teaching. Jesus said, do not stop him. Mark chapter 9, verse 39, do not stop him. Yeah, for no one who does a miracle, and my name can the next moment say anything bad about me. For truly I tell you, whoever, who, anyone who gives you a cup of water, and my name, because you belong to the Messiah, will certainly not lose their reward. <laughs> I love that. Oh, yeah. I forgot that part. A lot of my Jewish brothers and my Christian brothers think my Muslim brothers are tripping. <laughs> Listen, Jesus Christ in, in the Bible is the Messiah. <laughs> in the Quran, he is the Messiah. The only the only point where people get lost at is Jesus being the son of God. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Jesus came to his own people, John chapter 1, yet his own did not receive him. Yet 
to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name. He gave the right to become children of God. Listen, Jesus' own people did not understand him. <laughs> Listen, he lost, he lost, he lost a lot of people when he said he's the son of God. Okay? Listen. In fact, they crucified him mm -hmm. for making that claim. Mm -hmm. Did they not? Why did they kill Jesus for, for claiming to be the son of God? They said he was speaking blasphemy. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, man. It makes sense to me that if his own people didn't understand him, other people are not going to understand him. You see what I'm saying? Some people do. Some people do understand him. Listen, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is the son of God, the Messiah. If you Listen, in the Holy Quran text, Jesus Christ is clearly the Messiah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand the word Messiah. The word Messiah itself, the, God said to David, and, and to, to and God said to David about speaking about the Messiah, I will be his father, and he will be my son. The messianic prophecy, the word the, the Messiah has the right to call himself the son of God. For God said himself, I will be his father, and he will be my son. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. But they get lost by him being a son of God. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm trying to understand that Jesus Christ never made a big deal of trying to explain himself to the people. Because if even if he was to explain himself, you would not understand him unless you got unless you really believe in God and, and follow Jesus Christ as you ought to. You're not going. You're not going to understand. <laughs> even if he was to explain it to you, you better off talking to the wall. Listen, man. <laughs> but I love the fact that Jesus Christ is the Messiah in the Bible. Same one in the Bible. Same one in the Holy Quran. No division. Listen. The Holy Quran, chapter 3, verse 55, God our Father said, Oh Jesus, I am terminating your life and raising you to me and clearing you of those who disbelieve. God know who believe in him and who don't. Jesus Christ know who believe in him and who don't. John chapter 6, verse 63, Jesus said, It's the spirit that gives life, huh? Mm -hmm. Listen, Jesus said, it is the spirit that gives life. The flesh comes for nothing. <laughs> the words I have spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. Those words I just now said. Jesus said, it's the spirit that gives life. <laughs> the flesh counts for nothing. <laughs> the words I have spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. <laughs> Those words right there I just now said are full of the spirit and life. Yet, there are some of you who do not believe. <laughs> for Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who betray him? God know who believe in him and who don't. Jesus know who believe in him and who don't. The Holy Quran, chapter 3, verse 55. God our Father said, And I will make those who follow you. Jesus, if you follow Jesus Christ as God wants you to and as you ought to, you will have a very good understanding of God's word. You hear me? You have a very good understanding of God your Father and God's word, how he speak, past, present, and future. Listen. <laughs> God our Father said, and I will make those who follow you, Jesus, superior <laughs> to those who disbelieve until the day of resurrection. Yeah. Many people can't read the Holy Quran because they don't believe. And I love the fact the Holy Quran will prove you to be a disbeliever because you can't read the word. <laughs> you will prove yourself to be a disbeliever because you can't read the word, just like the Bible. Many people can't read the Bible. They see what they want to see. What you mean, Devontae? The Holy Quran, chapter 3, verse 7. Say, it is he, God, who revealed to you the book. Some of his verses are definite. They are the foundation of the book. And others are unspecific. As for those in whose hearts are deviation, if your heart crooked your heart off, it shows, man, you can't read. If you got deviation in your heart, you off the path. Something wrong with you. Your heart ain't right. As for those in whose hearts are deviation, they follow the unspecific part. Seeking the sin, they just want to take God's word of the contest and twist it, distort it, put their word on it to make it say what they want. To, they want to make God's word say what they wanted to say, not what God want, want them to see. You see what I'm saying? Listen, they do that. Your heart ain't right. They, they do that in the Bible. They take God's word of the contest and distort it and twist it. You see what I'm saying? Listen, as for those in whose hearts are deviation, they follow the unspecific part, seeking the sin and seeking to divert an interpretation. But none knows its interpretation except God and those and those firmly rooted in knowledge. <laughs> My great grandma said all the time, Vontae, you got that root. <laughs> I know what she was talking about. <laughs> this woman right here. <laughs> her church got shut down about five years. My, she, my, my, she, she, my, her, her church. My speech is slurred. Her church got shut down about five years ago. All right. And my grandma loved to go to church. So I sit down and read with her. I won't gonna let that stop her. She was she an old woman. She loved to get up and go to church, man. My great grandma kept her strength up. She was ninety. She she died last year. Uh, she was ninety four. Well, she living now. She in heaven, breathing better than ever. Mm -hmm. Listen, but she went home last year. You hear me? And she had her strength up until she got sick. 
And I'm telling you, man, my God kept her strength up. She, where she was able to move from A to B. Listen, 94 years old. Listen, <laughs> she got saved 1969. She was 40. From 40 to 94, she said, Monte, I ain't never seen nobody like you before. <laughs> she said, you got that root. You been that word. I used to laugh at it. I used to sit down and read with her. I, I got some recordings of me reading with her in the morning. <laughs> where she just looked at me all funny, like, how you know what you know? <laughs> she said, you got that root. You down deep in the Lord. I ain't never seen nobody like you. I used to laugh at it. <laughs> I miss her. Uh, listen to me. Many people can't read the Holy Quran because they're not a true believer. <laughs> You approve yourself to be a disbeliever in God because you can't read the word. Anybody can pick up a uh, Quran and go from chapter 6, 12, 18, 20 and see what you want to see. Many people see what they want to see, not what God wants to see. Anybody can pick up the Bible and go from Genesis to, to, to Mark to uh, Galatians or whatever. Pick and read, you see what you want to see, not what God wants you to see. But you can't read verse from verse, starting from Genesis 1 all the way to the end. Listen, I love the fact Listen, many people many people distort the Bible. <laughs> Where is it at, Devontae? Get your Bible. Go to go to Second Peter chapter three. Get your Bibles, man. Go to Second Peter chapter three, verse fifteen. Brother Peter said, "Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you. What's the what, what's the wisdom that God gave him? God gave Paul a wisdom." <laughs> Uh, that many people could not stand, could not understand in his day. <laughs> many people, Paul wrote two thirds of the New Testament. Many people today, 2024, could not understand what Paul wrote. Paul wrote two thirds of the New Testament. <laughs> okay, listen. <laughs> God gave him a wisdom that many people could not understand. But if you, but if you worship God your Father and follow Jesus Christ as you ought to, you have a very good understanding. Listen. <laughs> Even Peter himself said, <laughs> Paul writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand. Which ignorant and unstable and unstable people distort as they do other scriptures to their own destruction. Listen, there is nothing wrong with the word of God. It's the people who teach about God who don't know a thing about God or his word. That's why they they take God which ignorant people, ignorant and unstable people, distort. They take God's word of the contents. They put their touch on it. You see what I'm saying? They twist God's word, man. They do this. I see the word of God. I have found the word of God in Judaism. Christianity and Islam. Listen to me. God never said make Judaism. He never said make Jesus Christ never said make Christianity. If you can find if you can find in the Bible what God or Jesus said make Judaism or Christianity, I will never do another teaching again. I will throw my Bible away. Yeah, listen to me. But he did say make Islam in the Holy Quran. But listen, God never, God don't care about religions. He cares about a relationship, okay? Judaism, it begins with Abraham, okay? He the first one to be called a Jew. Listen, Hebrew, listen. It begins with them. Listen, <laughs> the law was given through Moses, but Abraham had the law too. In Genesis 26, Abraham clearly had a relationship with, with God. God left his word. Genesis 26, when Abraham died, <laughs> verse Genesis 26, God made a covenant with, with, with his son Isaac. Genesis 26, verse 4. The Lord told Isaac, I'll make a, I will make you, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. <laughs> I will give, I will give them all these lands and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because Abraham obeyed my voice because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him. Keeping my commands. Abraham kept the word. Huh? God, left, God had a relationship with Abraham. Huh? He left. He kept his word. My decrees and my instructions. Yeah, listen to me. God clearly had a relationship with Ab God is evident. Evidence I'm clearly seeing. Uh, my shirt blue, white with with the my shirt blue, gray with the stripes or whatever. My skin black. My turban. I mean, my skin is brown. My turban black. <laughs> my pants is brown. Okay, evident. You can clearly see this. Evident is a shorter word for evidence. God will, evidence is what hold a person captive. You go to court, if they don't got no evidence on you, you're free to go. All right? Evidence is what hold a person. God clearly left his evidence with the people. That is evident. Anybody God ever spoke to, past, present, or future, he will leave his evidence that he's been there. Okay? God left the word with Abraham. The law was given through Moses. Listen. <laughs> Abraham clearly had a relationship with God. That is evident. You can clearly see that. Jesus Christ had a relationship with God. That is evident. You can clearly see that. Listen to me, man. I understand Judaism and Christianity. Ain't nothing. If you're a Jew Christian, that's good. Good. You see what I'm saying? God don't care about religion. He cares about a relationship, okay? Listen. God clearly had a relationship with, with Jesus. Jesus Christ is in the closest relationship with God. There is there is nobody who got a closer relationship with God than Jesus Christ himself. You hear me? Listen. 
God left his word through Jesus. God left his word through Abraham. God left his word with God had a relationship with the prophet Muhammad. Listen, he left the word. He left the law there. Any, anywhere God uses, he will leave the word. Okay? Listen to me, man. Listen. The prophet Muhammad had a relationship with God. Listen. Abraham worshiped God our father. Jesus Christ worshiped God our father. He taught us how to worship God. He said, this is how you should pray. Our father in heaven, huh? Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> Jesus said, the father is greater than I. I love the fact Jesus never put himself over the father. Jesus said, the father is greater than I. <laughs> Jesus said, God is a spirit. Those who worship him, not me, those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. These are the type of worshipers the father seeks. Jesus said, on my own, I can do nothing. <laughs> I do I, I, Everything I do, I do as the father allowed me to do. Huh? Listen. <laughs> The prophet Muhammad worshiped God our Father. He called him Allah. God our Father got many names. Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nessa, Jehovah Rapha, the great I am, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the great I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am who I am, the creator of the universe, the creator of the universe, and all who dwell in him, the one. These are his names. They are attributes of God. The greatest name of God is Allah. <laughs> it's an Arabic word. Not English. The Prophet Muhammad was not a black man. He was not a white man. He was an Arab. The greatest name of God is Allah. It can't be attributed to nobody else. A lot of my Christian brothers and my and my Jewish brothers, they my Muslim brothers talking about somebody else. <laughs> they talking about the same God we talking about. I love the fact Allah sounds a whole lot like Abba. Jesus Christ called God his father Abba. You hear me? Word. A B B A. <laughs> listen. <laughs> listen, man. There is nothing wrong with the word of God. It's the people who teach about God. <laughs> In his word, who don't know a thing about God, nor his word. If Abraham, Jesus, and the prophet Muhammad were alive, and they are alive, they will all be standing side by side, worshiping God our Father. You hear me? I'm telling you, man. It wouldn't be no division, but many people are divided. If you live in Lynchburg, right up and down, right up and down the street, you'll see six or seven different churches before you get off your street. Where uh, Baptist church, uh, Lutheran church, Pentecostal church, Presbyterian, Presbyterian church, Methodist church, and uh, Catholic Church, <laughs> man, all these churches are Christian churches. <laughs> well, how come they got so many different names and they so divided? <laughs> you go to one church, you gotta do something this way. You go to this church, they don't want you doing something that way. <laughs> you go to this church, they, they don't they don't approve you doing something that way. <laughs> Listen, man, <laughs> y'all all supposed to be worship. You are all supposed to be worshiping God your Father. But how come y'all so divided? Hmm. Talk to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with God or his word. It's the people who teach about God. And they take God's word and twist it up, man. They put their touch on it. They want you to do their will, not his will. Say on the word of God better than a whole lot of y'all, believe it or not. Matthew chapter 4. Get your Bible, man. Matthew chapter 4. I always start off like this every morning. Matthew chapter 4. Verse 5. Say the devil took Jesus to the holy city. And had him stand on the highest point of the temple. He wanted Jesus to commit suicide. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. <laughs> for it's written. For it is, for it is written. He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Satan won't lie. <laughs> he quoted Psalms 91. He just took God's word of the contest. He wanted Jesus to commit suicide. I can only imagine what he wanted y'all to do. Satan, he, he tried Jesus. <laughs> he quoted Psalms 91 on Jesus, verse 11. He wasn't lying. He just took God's word of the contest and distorted it. Anybody can take God's word and make you like a fool. Satan does this. Well, well many of y'all, he tried Jesus. You think he ain't going to try you? He couldn't get over on Jesus, though. Listen, <laughs> but he quoted Psalms 91. Get your Bible and go to Psalms 91, verse 11. How he know Psalms 91, verse 11? Because he know the word. <laughs> yeah. The word is powerful. It can be used to control you. If you don't know it yourself, God, they can make you look stupid. Many people, man, many people are trained to make you look stupid. I know atheists who don't even don't even believe in God, but they got a Bible and they 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 can go all through it and they can show you. They can make you look stupid. Listen, man. Psalm ninety-one verse eleven. This what this was Satan quoted. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands. So, so that you would not strike your foot against a stone. He ain't read this part, though. You would tread on the you would tread on the lion and the cobra. You would trample the great lion and the serpent. <laughs> he ain't read that. But besides not reading stuff, he he read the word of God. He quoted the word of God word for word. Didn't miss a beat. <laughs> he won't lie. He just took God's word of the conscience. <laughs> he wanted Jesus. He wanted Jesus to test God. 
Man, man, many people get y'all. Listen to me, man. <laughs> you must know, you must know the word of God better than your adversary, my brother, sister. Your adversary is Satan, and your adversaries are the people who teach God's word who don't know a thing about God. They wrap you up and they make you look stupid, man, because you don't know the word yourself. You must know the word of God better than your adversaries, my brother, sister. Listen to me. <laughs> Mark, Matthew chapter four, verse seven. Jesus said, it is also written, huh? You must know, the, if somebody come around y'all and try to make y'all do something you ain't got no business doing or make you look stupid, you must know the word of God. You must know the word of God better than your adversary, man. Brother, sister, so listen. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4, verse 7, it is also written, huh? Do not put the Lord your God to the test, okay? <laughs> right up. Now we can get to the Holy Quran, wherever I left off at. I'll just get right down there. Uh, where did I leave off at? Me don't know, me don't know. Let me see, let me see. Okay. Uh, the Holy Quran, chapter 9. I don't know where I left off at. Verse 33. The Holy Quran, chapter 9, verse 33. Let me get there. Bear with me. It is early. I need some something to drink. <laughs> it's my drunk. Super dry. Just talking, man. Y'all got to bear with me. I ain't one of these 10 minute people, man. <laughs> Some of y'all people, y'all wait till Sunday. You go to the church and the, the past, they give y'all 20 minute teaching. <laughs> man, I give y'all hours every day. <laughs> and when I get off here, I, I find somebody else to talk to. <laughs> Listen, this talk can get a lot out of me sometimes. All right. Word up. But God bless y'all. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right. The Holy Quran, chapter 9, verse 33. It says, it is he, God, who sent his messenger with the guidance, with the guidance and the religion of truth. I like that. I, li I like that. I like that. And the religion of truth. God don't care about religions. You see what I'm saying? Tr a true religion with God is those who worship him and accept his word. I love the fact God will make his way so simple. A, a little kid can understand, man. You see what I'm saying? Listen, a God took Abraham outside. And Abraham ain't had no children at the time. God took him outside, told him, look up and count the stars the, count the stars in the sky if you can. So shall your offspring break. God told Abraham, you see all these stars? That's how many children you're going to have. Abraham was an old man. Listen, Abraham believed God and God credited him his righteousness. Uh, listen, God, listen, man, I love that so much. Why did it look like that? Anyway, the Holy Quran, chapter three. Yeah, God will make, God will make his way so simple. That a child can understand. You see what I'm saying? God don't care about religions. He cares about a relationship with him. You hear me? You can be a, you don't have to be a Jew. You don't have to be a Christian. You don't have to be a Muslim. But what you do gotta do is believe in God, worship him, and accept him and accept his word. You see what I'm saying? Listen to me, man. Word. Listen, he will accept you. All right. It is he who sent his messenger with the guidance and the religion of truth. Amen. In order to make it prevail over all religions, even though the idolaters dislike it. <laughs> People <word. laughs> The Holy Quran, chapter 9, verse 34. Say, O you who believe, many of the rabbis and priests consume God's wealth illicitly. You see, many people who teach God's word, man, they just want the money. Y'all, y'all so dumb. Listen, you got some good pastors and some good teachers out here. They really do the right thing with y'all when y'all when y'all supporting them and God bless them. Anyone who really doing the right thing, <laughs> listen, man, you, you don't see many people like this though. Many people they just want your damn money. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Y'all give y'all money up and who and who was it helping? <laughs> Nobody. Who was it benefiting? Nobody. What what, what did they need for what to do what with? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I got people who want to support me. I'm not gonna take it right now until I really know what to do. You see what I'm saying? I can easily have people just give me money. I don't want to take y'all's money until I really know what to do yet. Get a building or something. The Lord give me, because I'm not just going to have it sitting somewhere. You see what I'm saying? And I refuse to, to let anybody think I'm using their money for something negative. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Where? That's why I have not put nothing up there yet. I, I put something up for my book. If someone want to buy my book or something, I'm not going to take this. I'm not just going to accept people's money when I don't know what to do with it yet. You see what I'm saying? Many people, they quick to give you... Y'all go to somebody and offer them some money. They quick, yeah, 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 I get it. They got plans. They already got plans and don't know... They, it ain't no plans from God. You see what I'm saying? Listen to me, man. Until I really know what to do, I'm not taking nobody's money or this and that yet because I refuse to let somebody's money be caught up in what... and think I'm doing something wrong with it. 
You see what I'm saying? Until I really know what to do, I'm not taking nobody's money. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because I don't know what to do yet. You know what I'm saying? Many people quit though. They, they yes, give me your offer. Give me money or Sundays to go off, Apple school up, all types of offers. What they what, what do you see them doing with your money? <laughs> they, they don't even feed y'all. <laughs> Real food. You see what I'm saying? What, what the hell? <laughs> y'all keep giving y'all money to these people and they not doing nothing for you or your community. You know what I'm saying? At all. <laughs> they quit to take your money. Y'all wake up, man. Listen. <laughs> Many people they 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 love to get your money. I, listen, man. Wait, and, but God bless the people who really do the right thing with with the, with the money that people give them. Because you do got some good people who really do go out that way and they they feed homeless people, help people like that, and that's a good thing. You see what I'm saying? Wait, but you got some people who do that. But most of the people, y'all just wasting y'all money, man. Y'all giving the people who don't do a damn thing for you or the people around you. Listen. The Holy Quran, chapter 9, verse 34, say, Oh, you who believe, many of the rabbis and priests consume people's wealth illicitly and hinder from God's path. <laughs> Word up. Those, those who hoard gold and silver and do not spend and do not spend them in God's cause, inform them of a painful punishment. Hey, God, God gonna get all the people back. If any one of y'all hmm, misusing mis, mis, misusing the place that people put in y'all, hmm, God gonna get them people back. Listen, listen. Some people riding around a nice car, got a nice home, this and that. Hmm, listen to me. So ain't nothing wrong with having a nice car, nice home. You doing what you're supposed to do, this and that or whatever. Hey, God bless you. But some people just they they, they just use y'all, man. They get the car, get the home. You see what I'm saying? Listen, hmm, God got something for them people. They've been years people been getting over on people. Hmm. Years, man. They've been living off of y'all. You see what I'm saying? Listen. And they not they not they don't they don't give their life to God. You see what I'm saying? The worker worth his wages. But many of y'all, y'all take care of somebody who don't give a damn about y'all. They're not willing to go out their way. They're not giving y'all the truth. They were they worry more about gold. Listen to me. I know people with big churches. Got a lot of people there, but no one being saved. It's a church up the street. Got a big church with a lot of people there, but but no I don't see nobody being saved. I, listen to me. If y'all been going to church five years, 10 years, 15 years, and still stuck in square zero, you ain't got no testimony, you ain't got nothing to show for, something wrong. I'm 29. <laughs> Listen, man, I got like five books. I probably got more than that. Listen to me. I brought my own money, man. I print this out. It costs money to do this stuff. Listen, <laughs> and I get, I give out most of my, anything that I got, most of the stuff I got, I give out. Do you know how much I done gave out? Y'all see me giving out stuff every. Any one of y'all can take one of my teachers and do this and do that and, and make and put your man. You, if anyone who got sense, I give y'all so much stuff. Y'all can put so much stuff together. Anybody got sense, words. Someone who's smart can see what I'm talking about. Word, word. And they they do if they don't let it go to waste. You see what I'm saying? Listen to me. Many people they worry about gold. I give y'all hours every day. Hours. And it ain't no twenty minute teaching. And, and then what I give y'all is someone who's really taking me serious and put into practice, you can do something with it. You see what I'm saying? Many people, man, they're not worried about your soul. They just worry about your, the goal. You see what I'm saying? As long as you, I don't give a damn how many people you got in your church. I, it's a church up the street. Got a lot of people every Sunday. It'd be a big church. People come, but nobody being saved. They go. I'm telling you this now, man. They go there. They, they teach some philosophy. And you, they teach you about y'all go there and y'all preach. The pastor did his job today, didn't he? Woo! You go in one way, come out the exact same way you came in. No change at all. You see what I'm saying? They're not telling y'all the truth. Listen to me. If you've been going to church five years, ten years, or fifteen years, and you ain't got nothing to show at all, not a testimony, not nothing. If you ain't got nothing you can use that, that has been taught you, something is very wrong. Very wrong. You don't see that? Clearly, you should be able to see this. Oh, y'all just like being the way you been. <laughs> Listen to me, man. The pastor tell y'all he should be able to see. If I see any one of y'all who truly up under me and watching me, follow me, and I, and I don't see you growing, I'm going to tell you, you, you're doing something wrong, bro. You, you're not taking me serious or something wrong. It's something that you caught up in that you're not paying attention to because you should you should be growing by now. You should be a teacher by now. You should be at a different level by now. If you're not, something wrong. <laughs> there is nobody who I know who ever came in contact with God our Father and has no change. There is nobody I know who ever came in contact with Lord Jesus Christ and had got no change. There is nobody I know who ever came in contact with the Holy Spirit of God and got no change. Jesus met that woman at the well, John chapter 4. He met a woman at the well, man, <laughs> told her all about herself. Jesus said, uh, I got some living water. <laughs> got, got her attention, lined her up. She said, I want some of this water. Jesus said, go get your husband. She, she, I ain't got no husband. Jesus said, you're right when you say you ain't got no husband. The fact is, you got, you had five 
husband, and the man you with now is not your husband. Jesus said, you're right with said you got no husband. Jesus told all about herself, did he not? Jesus is going to tell you the truth. A lot of them, they're not going to tell you the truth, man. Jesus is going to point out what's wrong. He pointed out what's wrong to that woman. Told her what she had, what she had going on. She was living in adultery. She was living in adultery. Mm. He lined up, but before you can get some real living water, he got to line you up and bring you out of the darkness and to point you to the light. You got to come out of the darkness first. You see what I'm saying? A lot of them, they leave you in the darkness and they, they try to give you water, but you can't, you, you can't, you can't use it because you're still in darkness. They got to tell you the truth before, before you can come to the light. You got to come out of the darkness. They're not giving you the word to make you come out of the darkness. You see what I'm saying? Listen to me, man. They should be able to see this. That they should be able to see where you stuck at. That woman went home. She told everybody. She said, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. The very first day she came in contact with Jesus. She had a testimony. My great-grandma got saved 1969. <laughs> 1969, man. Listen, this woman right here, my great grandma was an alcohol. She was a strong alcoholic drink, straight corn whiskey. Not no, not no beer you get from the stove. Straight corn whiskey, old school drink. You know them old school drinkers. They some, they some, oh, they, they some, they some tough drinkers. You see what I'm saying? I ain't talking about no beer. Straight corn whiskey, <laughs> tough, you, strong stuff. Listen, the very first day, Ella Johnson gave her the word. I gotta get his pictures downstairs. Ella Johnson gave my great grandma the word. The very first day she came home, she told her husband, my great granddad, McKinley Johnson. I never met him. She, she told her husband the very first day she came home, man. She it was she had her friends at home waiting on her. You know when you get home, you got your friends waiting on you. Get high, get drunk. She came home the very first day. She told her husband and Lee and, and his and his and his friend Lee Hubbard's dad and a few other people. I don't want no more of that stuff now. She the very first day you come in contact with God, He give you power. Huh? A lot of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. You ain't, you're not a spiritualist power. Why is that? <laughs> because you, you don't know God your father. <laughs> you don't know Jesus Christ. You don't know the Holy Spirit of God. You think you do, but you don't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because the very first day, God gave you power over these things. You ain't going to be perfect now. Little by little. He ain't going to do everything for you at one time. Little by little. Keep that in mind. <laughs> but he gives you power. Huh? The very first day. Not the second day. Not the third. The very first day you come in contact with God. If y'all been going to church five years, ten years, fifteen, I feel sorry for y'all. If you ain't coming, if you ain't experienced no change yet, like Jesus said, Matthew, Matthew chapter fifteen, verse seven, you hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. <laughs> These people worship me in vain, but their hearts are far from me. The very first day you give your heart to God, El Shaddai on the night, and you take them serious. He give you power, don't you know, brother, sister? Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 say, let us, who is us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea, over the birds in the sky, over the livestock, over the wild animals. Satan is referred to as the wild animal in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. They say, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. Don't you know, the very first day. You know who your father is, you know who Jesus is, and you know who the Holy Spirit of God is. He gives you power over sin. The world is Satan. Huh? Uh, it, ain't, it ain't no alcohol alive. It ain't no drugs alive. Heroin, meth, it ain't no drugs alive. It ain't no sex alive that's more powerful than God. Don't you know, brother and sister, you are created in his, in his you are created in his image. You are powerful beyond measure. A lot of y'all being ruled by drugs. You being ruled by smoke. You being ruled by alcohol, whatever. That's because you don't know who God is. The very first day you know who God your father is, he can you power over these things. Jesus said in Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, verse 18. Get your Bible, man. Luke chapter 10. Luke Verse 18. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning huh, from heaven. Jesus said, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power, not half of it, and to overcome all the power, not a quarter of it, and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Your enemy is Satan. <laughs> Nothing will harm you. <laughs> the very first day you know who God your father is, you know who Jesus Christ is and the Holy Spirit of God is, God gives you power overseeing the world and Satan. <laughs> huh? A lot of y'all feel like y'all bound up Stuff ruling over y'all. That's because you don't know who you are yet. Well, you haven't experienced it yet. The very first day you know who God your father. God said, I'm the Lord your Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 3. God your father said, I'm the Lord your God. 
who brought you out of Egypt. <laughs> you shall have no other gods before me. Y'all don't understand this because y'all putting things before God. The very first day you take God seriously and don't put nothing before him. If you, if you say these words right here, God, I refuse to bow down to nothing but you and you alone. He had his power right there. And not just to know that, but to choose him. You must actually choose, make up in your mind who you want to serve, God or the world. A lot of y'all bow down to created things rather than, rather than the creator. There is nothing, there is nothing that God has created on earth that's more powerful than what's inside of you, my brother, sister. The only thing that would, the only thing, capital T, that would have mastery over you is God, your father. That's because he created and designed you to have, to be in submission to him. You hear me? But nothing else. No one else will have mastery over you. Nothing else. You're not going to be perfect. But listen to me. a lot of past leaders see they're not gonna tell you this. You know what I'm saying? They want you to be up under them. They want you to feel like you need them. You know what I'm saying? They, they want you to do their will, not his will. You know what I'm saying? They don't want you to grow. If I see any one of y'all watching me, following me, and I know who you is, and you still stuck at square one, you ain't learning to grow, I'm gonna call you out on now, now it's it's up to you. To make up in your mind what you want to do. I tell people all the time, you must choose, my brother or sister, what you want to do. Do you like being where you at? Because listen to me, you ain't gonna be up under me with that stuff. You ain't gonna be around me. I will not, I will not have you, I will not have you thinking it's okay to be where you at. Especially if I know how powerful you is. I'ma tell you, I'ma take take God serious, man. If I see you at a stuck at a spot, you ain't growing as you ought to be growing, something wrong. I can I can bring you to the water, but I can't make you drink it. I can't make you drink it. If you don't, if you don't choose to take out His word and, and drink what the Lord give you, that's on you. But damn it, I'm gonna call you out on it. I ain't gonna let you. I, I, I refuse. If I got anybody up under me or around me, and I see them stuck at square zero, especially if you're older than me. If you're younger than me, if that's one thing. But if you're older than me, I'm gonna call you out on that. You see what I'm saying? Because you. And especially if you claim to know God. I'm 29. It don't take five years of being saved. It don't take 10 years of being saved. 15 years of being saved to, to, to start learning, talking, and teaching about God. You see what I'm saying? The very first day that woman went home, the very first day, the very first day that woman at the well met Jesus, she went home and told everybody. Huh? The very first day my great grandma came home, she told she told the people, I don't want no more of that stuff no more. The very first day. She ain't touched a drop since. I love that, man. God gives you power over these things. It ain't no alcohol alive. It ain't no smoke alive. Whatever you can think of smoke, it, it ain't a drug alive. <laughs> More powerful than God. It ain't no sex alive. Some of y'all strung out on lust, got them lustful urges or whatever. It ain't nothing. <laughs> sex ain't more powerful than God. Sm drugs ain't powerful than God. Alcohol ain't more powerful than God. Brother and sister, you are made in this image. You are powerful beyond magic. You don't even know it. A lot of y'all like credit cards and phone cards that haven't been activated yet. Listen to me. Yeah, you, you get activated through the word. A lot of y'all never had the word to, to activate y'all. They give y'all some water damn bull crap. You see what I'm saying? I, I refuse to have anybody listen to me, be up under me, and not see their potential. Listen to me. A lot of pastors, whoever y'all go to church with, your pastor should be telling me what I'm telling you. If they see you stuck at a, if, they, if, anyone, if, I, if I ever see anyone, one of y'all, listen to me for over a year or something, and, and you're not growing, learning anything, I'm going to call you out, man. You're doing something wrong. It's something you're not taking serious. Like Jesus said, these people worship me in vain, but their hearts are far from me. You see what I'm saying? Your heart ain't in the right spot. You ain't giving your heart to God. God is a spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. These are the type of words that the Father seeks. Huh? The pastor should be telling y'all that. The teachers should be telling y'all that. Why are they not telling you this? Because they worry about gold more than they is souls. Huh? They worry about having a lot of people. If, if, if it ain't nothing but, if I close my eyes and die, and, it, and it, there is nothing but one person, who I led, who I led the God, who God used to lead me, uh, who God used, uh, that God used me to lead them to Him. <laughs> that's more, that's more valuable than having a church with millions of people. <laughs> it's people who got big churches, uh, thousands of people, big, big churches, but big people, but not nobody being saved. <laughs> Do you know how embarrassing that is to be so close to God yet never, yet not be saved? <laughs> huh? Do you know how shameful and humiliating and humiliating that would be <laughs> to have this very big church, <laughs> but not no one being saved? <laughs> huh? A lot of people they worry about gold. <laughs> and I tell you what I'm telling you. Why is that? <laughs> they should know it. If any, if anybody over y'all, <laughs> if if you're a parent 
and then you see your children that is because the, the 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 roles of the leaders are like parents. You know what I'm saying? And we who up under them are like the children. And if anyone else see our children not growing properly, would, would you just let them keep on continue to be like how they are, or are you gonna say something? If you really love them, you're gonna say something because you want them to grow beyond what you got going on, correct? Or is you just gonna let them keep on doing what they're doing? Because it shows, man. It shows and who really care about you and who really don't. Because a lot of people, they will they will have you being how you are, stuck in one spot. Probably because they stuck in one spot. You see what I'm saying? I don't want, I will, I will, I will die. I will die before I let anybody up under me stay in one spot and not call them out on what they got going on. You see what I'm saying? Because that, that, that's the that's a outlook on my reflection. On how, on how I care about them, how I feel about them. Because if you really love someone, you're gonna point out, you're gonna point out what's going on, man. I ref, I would I would never let any one of y'all, anybody who I know who up, who up under me, think it's okay to be stuck at square zero, not learning. Something's wrong. And then you and then that show I really don't care about you. If I'm if I'm not willing to call you out on what's going on, not in the not in a harmful way, but in in the truth way. You see what I'm saying? Some of y'all been going church five years, ten years. 15 years and supposedly no God, but you ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> you ain't got no testimony. <laughs> Anybody can say God is good. God is great. Bless Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is awesome. <laughs> Word. Anybody can say that. You ain't got no testimony, truly. <laughs> you ain't got nothing. <laughs> you just said it on Sunday. <laughs> he should be the God of your life every day. <laughs> you ain't got no power. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> huh? Y'all see me each and every single day, don't y'all? <laughs> each and every single day. <laughs> not just on Sunday. <laughs> and I don't give a damn about just going to church because I, I don't play church. I'm not here for no fun of fashion. Many of y'all, fun of, my girl going to say all the time, I'm not here for no fun of fashion. You see what I'm saying? Many of y'all, fun of fashion. Y'all just here to meet people, talk to people, meet your girlfriend, meet your boyfriend, <laughs> and have fun, play with God. You can't play with God today. Not around me. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? If it word, I'm not like that. Okay? Many of the leaders, they see y'all playing games with God. <laughs> and they're not saying nothing. Why is that? Because they don't want you to grow. They don't want you to know something. <laughs> you know, or they happy with you being how you is. I refuse. That's not me. <laughs> I love y'all, man. <laughs> if, anyone y'all, if any one of y'all watching me and up under me, <laughs> I will not let you be where you where you at. I'm going to call you out on it because I want you to go past where I'm at. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I want you to get the God your father yourself. <laughs> yeah, you can know more, way more than what I know. <laughs> you can do way better than what I'm doing. You see what I'm saying? Word. You special. Each and every single last one of y'all is special. You see what I'm saying? Y'all not some weaklings. Y'all are special. Y'all, some of y'all be bound up. You got you struggling with this, struggling with that. That's because they not they had they not giving you the word to set you free. You said if you if you if when you, if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. You know what I'm saying? They're not telling you the truth. The truth, the truth will set you free. Huh? The Holy Quran, chapter 9, verse 34. Say, all you who believe, many of the rabbis and priests consume uh, people's wealth illicitly. <laughs> That's all they worry about, the damn money, man. <laughs> That's why you'll never grow. <laughs> That's why some of y'all will never grow. I'm talking I'm talking to the leaders, pastors, and teachers. <laughs> I don't care how big a church is, you will never grow. You can have, you can have way more than that. <laughs> but you will never grow as long as you're worried about gold more than you is souls. You see what I'm saying? A lot of y'all focus on gold rather than souls. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you will never grow. You will never have what God wants you to have. You will never be. God bless, God bless the brother, the honorable Minister Farrakhan. <laughs> a lot of y'all look at him like he's crazy or something. That brother's blessed. By God Almighty Himself, you can't you can't get stuff done like how you getting done. You hear me? It was show, and it ain't just for a reason. Listen, man, people people really trust him. Man, y'all y'all so worried about the gold, you will never have what that brother got going on. I'm talking to the leaders, the, the, a lot of the Jewish people and Christian leaders. You will never have, and a lot of the Muslim leaders too. You know what I'm saying? You will never have what that brother got going on. You hear something? Because y'all more worried about the gold. This is when you when you really care about someone's soul. And care about giving them the truth. God will give it to you, man. Listen, and listen to me. And you'll be able to give it right back out. You hear what I'm saying? I'm telling you. That brother blessed. Truly. Many people never know what I'm talking about. Or never reach that level. Because they care about gold rather than souls. That brother helped me out. He helped me out. You see what I'm saying? There's people around who I know personally. And can't do a damn thing for me. You see what I'm saying? I'm telling you this now, man. 
Why? Because they're more worried about gold rather than souls. Okay? <laughs> but God bless you, uh, brother, Minister Farrakhan. I love you, man. I, I wish I got it. I hope I get a chance to meet you before you go to heaven. Where? Or before I go to heaven. Either way. <laughs> I want to shake your hand personally. But anyway. The Holy Quran, chapter 9, verse 34, it say, Those who hoard gold and silver and do not spend them in God's cause, uh, Inform them of a painful punishment. Any one of y'all who been getting over on God and his people, God gonna punish y'all. <laughs> I'm letting you know. If any one of y'all who take who miss who, who miss who misuses the trust that God's people put in you, God gonna punish you. I'm letting you know. If any one of y'all been taking God's money <laughs> through his people for for just for, for your own selfish gain, <laughs> God gonna punish you. I'm letting you know. <laughs> the Holy Quran say inform them of a painful punishment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Holy Quran chapter nine verse thirty five say. On the day, on the day when they will be heated in the fire of hell, then their foreheads and their sides and their backs will be will be branded with them. This is what this is what you hoarded for yourselves. So taste what you so taste so taste what you used to hoard. The Holy Quran, chapter nine, verse thirty six, say, the number of months according to God is twelve months. Correct. It is in the in the decree of God since the day He created the heavens and the earth, of which four are sacred. This is this is the connect. This is the correct religion. So do not wrong yourselves during them, and fight the polys the poly, the polytheists collectively, as they fight you collectively. And know that God is with the righteous. <laughs> the poly, the polytheist polytheist is uh, if you Hinduism. Uh, Egyptian, if you, if you Hinduism culture, Egyptian culture, Greek culture, uh, uh, Japan culture, China culture, these are polytheistic religions. You know, they believe in many gods. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Where if you are Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, you are monotheist, monotheistic. <laughs> you are in monotheism, whether you know it or not. You believe that God is one. The idea and believe that God is one. All right, you believe in one God. <laughs> Hinduism, I mean Judaism. Christianity and Islam are monotheists. You you are in monotheism. You believe that God is one. Okay, correct? What? Right. Uh, Hinduism, Greek culture, and Egyptian culture, they, they will be classified as polytheistic religions. They believe in many gods. All right? Where? Right. They got a God for everything. God for the sky, God for the dirt, God for this, God for that. The Lord KG. They got a God for everything. You see what I'm saying? Where? Right. They, they are polytheistic religions. All right? But anyway. And fight the poly and fight the polytheists during, uh, collectively as they fight you collectively. And know that God is with the righteous, amen. And know that God is with the righteous, amen. Postponement, the Holy Quran, chapter nine, verse thirty-seven. Postponement is an increase in disbelief by which those who disbelieve are led astray, which means they uh, they procrastinate. <laughs> Postponement. Procrastination. Hmm. Many, people, many people be pro 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 procrastinating, right? They say they're going to do something, but they don't. <laughs> today, the, today, today, I'm going to change something, but they don't. <laughs> they procrastinate. Hmm. All right. Anyway, postponement is an increase of, in disbelief by which those who disbelieve are led astray. They allow it one year. They allow it one year. They allow it one year and forbid it another year in order to conform to the number made in order to conform to the number made sacred by God, thus permitting what God has permitted, thus permitting what God has forbidden, where the evil of their deeds seem good to them. God does not guide the disbelieving people. Where does you see? There's a lot of people who think there's a lot of people who do wrong. The Bible said the same thing too. Uh, woe to those. Uh, woe to those. Woe to those who make evil good. Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20. 
Get your Bible and tell me, is, it not, is this not the same thing? The Bible says, the Holy Quran, chapter 9, verse 37 say, the evil of their deeds seem good to them. God does not guide the disbelieving people. A lot of people think doing evil is good. <laughs> Word. You see, listen. And a lot of people think the good, doing good is evil. <laughs> Word. It's, they, they, they mind twist. <laughs> listen. It'll show. The, the, Bible says, the Bible says the same thing. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20 say, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. <laughs> Woe to those who are, who are wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight. <laughs> Where? You see? Read two more verses and get off it. The Holy Quran, chapter 9, verse 38 say, O you who believe, what is the matter with you? When it is said to you, O you who believe, what is the matter with you? When it is said to you, mobilize in the cause of God, you cling heavy to the earth. <laughs> Do you prefer the present life to the hereafter? The enjoyment of the present life compared to the hereafter? It is only a little. <laughs> Listen to me. If y'all so-called believers, if y'all believe, <laughs> stand up for God. <laughs> Why do y'all afraid to stand up and lose your life? Damn it, if, if, you don't, if you don't stand up for what you believe in, you say you believe, don't you? Well, stand up for God then. Y'all care about more about this little life? Life's short, man. I'm ready to die today or tomorrow. Well, I'm ready to die for what I believe in, man, today or tomorrow. You, you truly not ready to live until you, you... You are truly not ready to live until you're ready to die. <laughs> stand up for God, man. A lot of people, y'all, y'all be quiet because you don't want to rock the boat. You don't want to upset things, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you don't want to upset things. You don't want to hurt nobody's feelings, especially for the truth. You rather be quiet. You rather have your you you rather have your little relationship with people than with God. You yeah, you rather have yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah, listen. Why you not standing up for God for the right thing, huh? Why you not fighting for God for the right thing? You fight for the bull crap. Someone do y'all fight for BS crap all day, all day. Y'all fight for stuff that don't mean a damn thing. You like to argue with people for no, for nothing. Y'all like to argue for no reason. Then won't you stand up and, and, find, and, and do it for the right reasons, for the right purpose? You see what I'm saying? Wait, I know they hit somebody. Somebody understand that? Y'all like y'all like to make up bull crap all day. Why don't you just stand up for the for the truth, man? You see what I'm saying? Where y'all like to argue and fight people over some ne unnecessary stuff? And where it caused divisions of unnecessary. Why don't you why don't you get up and stand up for God? <laughs> divide the world, divide the world between God and, and the world. You see what I'm saying? Where it's standing for something that, ma that make a difference. <laughs> y'all do stuff that don't make a difference. Y'all fight people for no reason. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Where? <laughs> y'all wanna have the little life on earth. <laughs> How you love them terrible. That your little car, your little house, your little clothes. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Oh, man, you hear listen to me. You are here today and going tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Everything that you're doing, if it ain't built on God, banged on God, you wasting your time. Mm -hmm. Straight up. Mm -hmm. I'm letting you know. Okay? Mm -hmm. Y'all prefer the present life than the hereafter. Mm -hmm. Y'all not thinking about heaven. Y'all thinking about earth. Where well, you can get me, myself, and I. Mm -hmm. How can I help myself? How can I do this today? Get this and get that. Mm -hmm. Man, if you don't focus on how can you better the, better the people of God and better the word. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Y'all care more about the present life than the afterlife. Everything you're doing today, but if it ain't for God, man, it's going to go one day. Today, brother, is it all here today, going tomorrow. You see what I'm saying? A lot of y'all not thinking like that. Y'all just thinking about some selfish stuff. You see what I'm saying? Where? Tell the, if you tell the truth. Where? Stand up for God, man. It just need to be done. The Holy Quran, chapter 9, verse 39. Unless you mobilize, unless you get mobile, unless you get active and start moving in the direction God wants you to go, listen, unless you mobilize, he will punish you most He will punish you most painfully. For any one of y'all who claim to be believers and not stand up for God and doing what God asked you to do, you're going to go through something. He will punish you most most painfully and, and, will, and will replace you and will replace you with another people and you when that, and you will not harm him at all. God has power over all things. <laughs> the Holy Quran, chapter nine, verse forty. If you if you do not help him, God has already helped him. <laughs> if you if you do not help him, God has already helped him. When those who disbelieve, when those who disbelieve expel him, and he was a second, and he was a second of two in the cave, he said to his friend, "Do not worry. God is with us, and God has made his strength." Tranquility descend upon him. 
and supported him with forces you do not see, and made the and made the word the word of those who disbelieve the lowest, while the word of God is the highest. Amen. God is mighty and wise. Amen. I love that right there. I love it right there. I'm going to stop right down now. <clears throat> My voice keep on. I'm going to stop right down now. I like that, though. I like that a lot. Stand up for God, man. Any one of y'all who claim to be believers and ain't stand up for God? <laughs> All right. It's, it's, it says a whole lot about you. I ain't talking about just going to church. <laughs> Right. I, I told the people one day at church, I said, all y'all got families. Right. I told I told the people at church one time, it's, it's a church that I live right across the street from. And I was helping the people out for a little while, or trying to. People act like they don't want me to speak or something. But I told all of them one day, I said, all y'all got families. All y'all got families. And I've never seen none of y'all children here. All y'all got, I, I know most of y'all children. I'm talking about the people at the church. I know most of y'all children and grandchildren. You know what I'm saying? I never see them in the church. Why is that? Because you, you're not a true believer. You can't, you can't, you can't. I'm telling you, man. This, my great grandma, she took all her children to church. She, this one right here. She, 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 even, even people who are not her children. Even people who are not her children, she put on that van. <laughs> Word. You see what I'm saying? I, you don't see most of the people over there. They, they don't take their kids to church. <laughs> they go in front of fashion. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Word. <laughs> Y'all got family. Y'all go to church, but leave them at home. The hell kind of sense is that? <laughs> Word. That, that irritating. But I, I told the people at church one day. I said, all y'all got families, man. And y'all not standing up for your family. You see what I'm saying? Y'all, all y'all need to be, you got family. Y'all waiting on the, the pastor going to do something, man. If you, if you don't stand up for God yourself, I'm, I'm letting you know. I told them one, something similar like that. I can't think of how I said it correct exactly. You see what I'm saying? I'm telling you, I told them one that said, all y'all got families at home. You see what I'm saying? And y'all at church, y'all need to take God serious because you can see who really effective and who ain't effective. You see what I'm saying? Y'all can go to church, all y'all let them want to go to church too. How you at church and you leave your family at home? That don't make sense to me. You see what I'm saying? So you just want to be saved and you don't want your family to be saved? If you're doing the right thing, your people will see it. They will see it, man, clear as day. But if you ain't got no power, if you ain't taking, listen to me, a little kid can see who's serious and who ain't serious. A little child can look at their mama and daddy and see who they who's serious about God and who ain't serious. Yeah, yeah. A little kid can look at you and see if you if you're serious or not, huh? A lot of y'all playing games with your damn selves because you're not serious. You just dress up with a smell good on and get out and and think you did something. You ain't do a damn thing. Y'all been doing this for years. <laughs> and wonder why you can't affect nobody. <laughs> All y'all got family around, strung out, this, strung out on this, and strung out on that. <laughs> and you can't touch no, nothing on nobody. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Man, <laughs> you better get away from me with that crap. <laughs> Tell you that now. I hate to see that. <laughs> y'all love to go to church, but you leave, you leave your family at home. <laughs> what the hell kind of sense is that? Y'all keep on asking God for the Holy Spirit. He's going to give it to you. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit leading, leading you to Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus is going to lead us beyond our Father in heaven one day and get up out of here. Until then, I'm going to keep on praying for y'all, man. Y'all keep on praying for me, too. And I will see y'all again. Amen. God bless y'all.